We see in Australia where one day they're lifting up the pride flags and the next day the fire is falling on them. Where we see literally abortion rights skyrocketing where people can get away with whatever they want with regard to reproductive rights. We, we've seen biblical preaching being banned, silenced, no freedom of speech granted in such a place. And God continues to withhold the rain so that he wouldn't even quench the fires that are upon them. And yet when we analyze these scenarios, especially with respect to Australia, do you realize that Canada is more of a haven for the proud sodomites? Do you realize that Canada is more of a haven for silencing of biblical persuasion and biblical voices? Right. Do you realize that our abortion rights are far surpassed that nation of Australia? And yet we don't see the fire, but wait, it's coming. God intends by temptations, by signs, by wonders, by war, by mighty hand, and by his outstretched arm and the great terrors that he has promised for us to take us out of this nation. Amen. But that doesn't sound like a fun experience. Right? But I believe God will protect us. And if you look to Exodus, you find the same thing. Where the plagues fell on the nation, and God's nation within it was protected and saved from the carnage, saved from the wrath. But that doesn't mean we're not going to experience some things. We're going to be hurt by them, some of these things. We're going to have these things fall upon us. These are just the beginning of sorrows. The end is not yet. Right? He promised. And so expect this. Because like I said, Britain's a wicked nation. Like I said, Australia is a wicked nation, but hello, Canada is far worse. <laughs> you, you, you line it up. I mean, I expect it. I, I've, I've said this mantra over and over where I've said, you know, Great Britain is here, and then five years behind, Australia is following in their sinful wickedness, and then five years behind that, Canada is. And I expect it, since I've said it so much, that it would be true. And when I looked it up, the, the, the writing's on the wall. We are far, far, far worse than Australia. There's still... There's still provinces in Australia where, where you, will be, you, will be, you will be put to prison for aborting late term. There, there's, there is no limitations. I mean, if, if the baby is still inside, you can abort in Canada, okay? Nothing. But yet there's still provinces in, in Australia where there are limitations, where they have some sort of freedom of speech, where they have some sort, and yet they're on fire. And we sit here and go, oh, you, you know, God's judging them. Oh, we should wait. We should expect that, that that will be next. Turn to Isaiah chapter 9. <clears throat> In times like these, people start to think, you know, ah, come on, that's not really really God bringing the fire upon the people. And, and you know what? I, I, I may agree, Isaiah chapter 9, I may agree that God didn't set that fire, okay? But his protecting hand wasn't necessarily on it. And from what I understand, down in Australia, it's routine to have these fires um, every year. But the major difference is, is that the rain has been withheld. Okay, so they've been in extreme drought, therefore the fire just took off. And who brings the rain? The Lord. Who, who could have withhold these things from happening to them? The Lord. And, and who are they completely ignoring in their ways and in their walk? The Lord. Okay. And so it's not, it's not astonishing that a preacher could stand up and say, hey, the judgment of God is upon this place. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 17 says, Therefore the Lord, and I read this and I just, I just couldn't, I couldn't get away from it. Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall have mercy on the fatherless and widows. For every one is an hypocrite, speaketh folly. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. For wickedness burneth as a fire, it shall devour the briars and thorns, and shall kindle in the thickets of the forest, and they shall mount up like the lifting of a smoke. Through the wrath of the Lord of hosts is the land darkened, and the people shall be as the fuel of the fire. No man shall spare his brother. God is revealing here, as, as he is a consuming fire, so his wrath consumes. We've talked about this before in the sermon, The Presence of the Lord. That his, his protection is upon those that are in Christ, standing in his presence. But when God intervenes in the affairs of men, if you're not protected, if you're not obeying him as a nation, expect that your men would be as briars and thorns and even fuel for the fire. 
as God moves into a nation. The wrath of God will burn a nation. The wrath of God will also withheld what is needful to stop the burning, to quench the fires, being the rain. The Lord is jealous. He is a consuming fire, but he still desires to reach people, and so he judges. Okay, so all that we're witnessing there, the, the, the burning, the torment, the, 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 the anguish, the people losing everything, people dying. Are you saying that's just an act of mercy? Yeah, in a lot of ways it is, okay? Because what this nation is experiencing is God moving in to separate from and for himself a people, a peculiar people from that whole nation. Hey, there's an iron furnace here, a burning ague, wickedness, heathens. You want nothing to do with God. So God burns so that he would draw men unto himself. Because there are going to be people that recognize the hand of God in this scenario and turn to him and call out to him. So should we pray for Australia? Yeah, absolutely. Pray that God's purposes will be fulfilled. Pray that people the remnant that is there will respond to God and see that they're being rebuked, see that they're being corrected, see that they're being chastened by his hand. God here, as it said in Deuteronomy chapter 4, is intending to take a nation from within that nation, to separate for himself a peculiar people that is zealous for the works that he has for them. And he's going to do it just as he promised in Deuteronomy. He's going to do it with temptations. He's going to do it with signs. He's going to do it with wonders. And we've seen all that. People are reporting sights in the clouds and all these things are going on and people are having having visions and, and, and all these things are going on as the fires consume them. There is war and his mighty hand is stretched out arm is what's bringing all these terrors upon a nation that has long ago rejected and forgotten the Lord. God did this before the eyes of the Egyptians as a witness that my people are different and they're coming out of you. And today, I believe he is doing the same thing. He is before our eyes, taking a nation ahead of us and burning it to the ground in order that he could bring out people that would repent and believe on him and trust him. And get right! Let's pray for that remnant to respond. Let's pray that God would get his nation and his plans would be fulfilled. 